Students at Broken Arrow put their packing skills to the test as they connect with peers in New Jersey. At Prairie, research comes to life in the form of living statues. A special visitor comes to Merriam Park to share an important message with students. And the shadow heads to Shawnee Mission South to learn about a very special theater production dedicated to an important cause. All on this episode of Spotlight on Shawnee Mission. Welcome to Spotlight on Shawnee Mission. I'm your host, Leanne Neal. How do you mail a fragile object to New Jersey without it breaking? Fourth grade students in Courtney Moffitt's class at Broken Arrow had a chance to identify some possibilities and put them to the test. Yay! Awesome! <laughs> the students participated in a national activity called the Pringle Project. Teaming up with a group of fifth graders from the Garden State, the students tried to find the best way to package a single Pringle and mail it to New Jersey. The goal being to get the chip to its destination intact. Well, the Pringle Challenge is when you are supposed to create your own package and then put your Pringle inside of it and you have to send it all the way to New Jersey without breaking it. And the New Jersey students mailed their efforts to Kansas. All right, here's one piece and it just chipped off one more piece. After opening the packages, the students scored the results. If it's complete, then it's 100. 50 is if it has a crack not chipped. 10 if it's chipped uh, around the edges. And then potato dust is one point. They shared the scores with their East Coast counterparts and found out how their chip did via webcam. Uh, your Pringle was better than mine. Came out pretty good and then it has a few pieces chipped. Well, it was nice meeting you. Based on the Pringle Project, Megan and her partner JC would have some success wrapping an object in multiple layers of tissue paper and cotton. We chose a ring package, and so we put tissues around the Pringle, and we ripped up cotton balls and put it like around the ring case. We closed that, and then we put it in a little bit bigger box, and we put, I think, bubble wrap in it. Others, however, were more successful paying close attention to the shape of the package itself. The students took turns sharing their tactics and chatting with the New Jersey kids via the webcam. The partners celebrated their whole chip victories and laughed about their defeats. Four, five, six, and a bit of cotton. In some cases, the packages did not fare too well. And in one case, it was in pieces and covered in mold. The packaging, packaging techniques they used, they, the first, one of them was that they would, they tried to melt, they melted a Jolly Rancher and casted the Pringle in the Jolly Rancher and then just put it in the box and it was still intact. And then the second one was from yesterday and they uh, covered the Pringle in peanut butter and it stayed intact the whole, but it was really smelly and moldy and disgusting. The hands-on project allowed students to work on many skills. They teach a lot of different um, types of curriculum based upon student interest. And this particular group of kiddos really like to do things with their hands, very hands-on, very spatial. And um, they also enjoy the problem-solving aspects of things. We had to figure out what the volume is by, there are certain math formulas for certain, um, for certain shapes. and. My shape was a trapezoidal prism, so it was pretty hard to figure out the volume for mine. And you had to figure out how, how much it weighed. And in just a little bit, we're going to figure out um, what our overall score was. We were going to multiply the mass by the volume and then divide it by the number of points you got, and that's your overall score. All in all, the Broken Arrow students came out with much higher scores than those on the other side of the country. And they also came out with a better understanding of the postal system. I really did like it. And why is that? It shows you if you wanted to send something fragile across the country, then you need to know how to pack it fragile and you need to know how to send it. In addition to learning about packing and shipping, Moffitt believes collaborative projects can teach many important lessons. Hopefully that learning is fun. When we can learn, we can have a good time at the same time. And that's, 
kind of our whole philosophy in general. Um, but also some 21st century skills, the ability to be able to um, talk online with another child all the way across country and learn from them. You know, it was just overall just a great project. Up next, we'll watch statues come to life at Prairie Elementary School. Hello, my name is Adam McMorris. I am a fifth grader at Ryan Benny Hoven Elementary School. The book I read is Dexter the Tough by Margaret Peterson Haddix. It is about a boy who hates his new school on the first day. His teacher asks the class to write a story. Dexter writes that he's tough and that morning he had beat up a kid. Is this story true? Does he apologize to the kid? Will he ever like his new school? Read the book to find out. I rate this book four out of five stars because it was exciting and it kept me wondering what was going to happen next the whole time. So read Dexter the Tough for your William Allen White book this year. Welcome back. The sixth grade cultural report is a tradition at elementary schools across the district. But at Prairie, students in Emily Gill's class added a twist to the presentation of their research. Kia ora, my name is Megan and my country is New Zealand. Did you know that 90% of the plants found in New Zealand can't be found anywhere else in the world? Prairie Elementary School sixth graders have become walking compendiums of information on different nations around the globe as a result of extensive research to create their individual country report projects. Well, walking is actually a bit misleading. Students presented the facts they learned in the social studies unit by barely moving at all. In all of the history of Mexico, there has been three main ancient civilizations, the Mayas, the Aztecs, and the Olmecs. The sixth graders transformed themselves into statues, dressed in costumes representing the country they've been studying for the past month. They only came alive at the touch of a button to share their native knowledge. The light statue works by, um, we created a museum of students and they freeze and they stay frozen like a statue would and when somebody comes by they turn them on by pushing the button and the student comes alive and tells about their country and then they freeze again and that's how you know they're finished. Parents, teachers, students and community members came to visit the class's cultural statue garden in the Prairie Library. The live statues taught guests about everything from population and politics to customs and currency. Ni hao, my country is China. China's marriage system is similar to America's. Each statue gave a one to two minute speech every time their button was pushed. The event was the culmination of a class project that also included a research paper and display about the country they chose. We love to dance and have many dancing festivals. While it appeared effortless, the students admitted that much time and effort had gone into the project. My outfit is based on the um, native people of New Zealand, the Maori, and I looked up some pictures on the internet for the top and um, kind of made a design based on what they had, but sort of made it my own. Students put great planning and effort into all aspects of their report, from the costuming, to the display, to their presentation. It's been really fun. It's been a, the greatest social studies project this year. I'd actually say the favorite part of this project was giving my speech to everyone. That's fun. The various steps required to complete the project paid off. The kids have really enjoyed it. They enjoyed the process of taking the notes for the research paper because we did a different element of a culture each day. Mm -hmm. And so the project moved along so quickly and then at the end they were able to use their creativity and their knowledge and they've told me that that was really helpful for them. Helpful indeed. Students shared a number of interesting facts about various cultural aspects of countries from across the globe. Bonjour, I'm Michael Poskin and welcome to Belgium, located in Europe. As you know, Belgians love their food. We're famous for waffles and chocolate. We have a special dish called the Watcha Louis, made from a fish found only in Belgium, and the Brussels sprout is even named after our capital, Brussels. Ironically, America and Belgium are very good friends, despite that we have a king and you have a president. Another interesting fact is that pop rock and country are very popular in both areas, and there are special performances in Belgium every night. 
An interesting saying from Belgium is that it only takes three Belgians to make a party because we love to celebrate. Well, I've enjoyed the chat, but I got to get back to my waffles. Au revoir. Coming up, we'll find out what students at Merriam Park learned when they received a visit from a member of the Harlem Globetrotters. Hi, I'm Grant with Kids Science News Network. Are you an explorer? Can you see yourself living and working in space? NASA has big plans, starting with using the space shuttle to complete the International Space Station. Then, new spacecraft will fly people back to the moon. And from the moon, Mars will be studied. Someday people will live and work on Mars. To learn more about how you can help turn this vision into a reality, visit our website. Until next time, I'm Grant with Kids Science News Network. Students at Merriam Park were the lucky recipients of a visit from Juan Verscher, better known as The Shot, a member of the Harlem Globetrotters. He stopped by the school to talk with students about some important character traits, as well as demonstrate some of his basketball skills. The Harlem Globetrotters tour the globe, not just to entertain, but also to teach. I'm going to introduce myself. I'm going to tell you a little bit about the Harlem Globetrotters. I got a little something I want to introduce to you. It's on my ball here. Uh, pay, atten pay attention, kid. I didn't ask for it. Just keep that going. Their message? Cheer. And we came up with an acronym called CHEER. Can you say cheer for me? CHEER! One more time. CHEER! CHEER! Okay, CHEER stands for Cooperation, Healthy Mind and Body, enthusiasm, effort, and my favorite, responsibility. Verscher taught members of the Merriam Park community cheer by asking them what each of the words meant to them and having volunteers share their answers with the audience. Tell me, what does cooperation mean to you? <laughs> what does enthusiasm mean to you? Having fun. <laughs> What does effort mean to you? To try hard. What does responsibility mean to you? Taking care of something. <laughs> then he had some fun with the students. They played games, and he taught a few lucky students the moves it takes to be a globetrotter. We're going to learn the trick really, really quickly, and we're going to do the trick in front of all of these people, okay? Are you nervous? Uh, Good. Okay, turn around. Each participant got a patriotic sweatband and learned a trick, like an under-the-leg dribble or over-the-head pass. Oh, round the back, between the legs, put it behind you, off the tushy, boop. Yeah! I like that. Verscher definitely inspired enthusiasm go. from his audience with the help of his globetrotter magic. And that's kind of the magic, and that's kind of how we keep the kids uh, entertained in the whole process because you, you can, of course, pump any positive message to them, but the moment that you begin to, to uh, play with the basketball or do something amazing to catch their attention, once again, you can catch them and you can instill something positive to them again. So, did he leave them with a positive feeling? It was really cool. My favorite part was when he got the kindergartner and spin it on his finger. <laughs> it was awesome. Stay tuned. When we return, we'll head to Shawnee Mission South to learn about a very special theater project. Hi, my name is Catherine, and I'm a sixth grader at Pawnee Elementary School. If you like adventure stories that read like whitewater rafting trips, then Leap Pike Ridge by Indy Wilson is the book for you. Thomas Hammond lives with his mother and is upset that she is thinking of getting remarried. He rides a styrofoam block down the river to Leap Pike Ridge, and before he knows it, is sucked beneath the ridge into a world of underground caves, hidden passageways, and water pools. He finds a corpse, befriends a dog, meets a castaway, and stumbles into a treasure hunt beyond his wildest dreams. The only problem is, is that Thomas isn't the only one looking for the lost treasure. 
Will he ever find his way out of this underground world and see daylight again? You'll have to read Leap Pike Ridge by Indy Wilson to find out the answer. I rank this book four stars. Welcome back. The Shawnee Mission South Repertory Theater Program has tackled a number of challenging and intense subjects over time through various scripts, but arguably none more personally challenging than the recent production of the Cancer Poetry Project. The Cancer Poetry Project is an adaptation of a book Cancer that includes more than 140 poems written by people whose Cancer lives have been affected by cancer. He doesn't know why he's dying and dealing with this beast. For balance, I tried to remember the exhilaration of a patient cured. I can only be forthright and compassionate. Why is it so hard to open this door? The poets oh. include doctors, survivors, friends of cancer patients, loved ones of cancer victims, and others. Kathy Wood, Shawnee Mission South theater teacher and director of the show, selected 50 of her favorite poems from the book and asked not just the editor of the book, but also each of the poets for permission to perform their work. They stem from frustration. Some of them are humorous. They cover every emotion you can possibly think of. Every poet she contacted was happy to oblige. The book itself came from a woman whose name is Karen Miller and she was uh, really, really struggling when her husband was diagnosed with cancer, and so she used writing poetry as sort of an outlet, uh, therapy for her. She says that it made her feel so much better, and she thought, surely I'm not the only person out there who does this. So she put out just a general call for poems from anyone who had been touched or knew someone who'd been touched by cancer and I she received over 1400 submissions I believe and uh, there are a little over a hundred in the book uh, they come from people who have cancer they come from people who whose spouses have had cancer and they come from all kinds of emotions from uh, confusion from frustration from anger denial incredible grief and joy um, and one of the last poems is is called um, A Lesson, and it's about a cancer survivor who speaks at a, a cancer rally and tells everyone that, that, that cancer is a gift, that it, tell, it teaches people so many things that people shouldn't always just consider the, the horrible parts of, of suffering from a disease. The 50 poems were turned into performance pieces for the students who will embody the poets and present them as first-person monologues. It's this great collaboration of poetry sent in by people who are doctors, um, people who have suffered from cancer themselves and their families. We are reciting it as a series of monologues and it is um, just a really powerful show that I think is going to move a lot of people and I know um, is uh, going to um, have a good effect on the uh, people who do come and see it. And not all of them are sad, as many of the students said they expected. Obviously there's some sad poems, but there's also some poems of joy and humor and um, understanding. So just hearing their stories, I mean, now it just gives everyone a better look. It just shows that even through this horrible disease, there's humanity in it. To truly understand the feelings behind the poems, the Raiders researched their roles by meeting with cancer sufferers and survivors from the R.A. Block Cancer Foundation. Oh yeah, cancer is a scary word. And, and by itself it's just frightening, it's, it's overwhelming. It's, it's funny because um, it sounds so much that the cancer patient, it's the people around them that are more are really affected. You know, I've accepted it, I've dealt with it, I've gone through the denial, the anger, all that stuff. And that's the, what those poems these kids are trying to bring out, which is very helpful. I think that um, it's just very, it is almost informational because you, you're, they're expressing the feelings that people went through. And, and for most of us, and they said some of them aren't, but a lot of people have been touched by cancer and most people have been. And I just think people can connect to that. Well, I thought they connected very nicely with us, and if they could connect that nicely with us, 
surely they can connect nicely with their audiences everywhere. They did a beautiful job. The students listened to their stories, and many realized for the first time that cancer wasn't just about death, but about living life to the fullest. I hope they don't like come to the show and be like, oh, this is going to be so depressing, cancer. I mean, cancer is depressing, but really, it, it's people who are survivors. It, gave peop it gives people hope, like, you can make it. Life is good. I hope people, when they come and see it, they hope they realize that life is, you need to be happy to have the life you do and not be sick or not have anybody else you know, family be sick and just give you hope and uh, inspire you to, you know, really live life instead of being like, oh, life sucks, I have nothing going on for me, and, but really you need to cherish life because these people, some of them who have cancer will probably die and it's really sad and uh, hopefully these poems will tell people, you know, live life to your fullest. All of the proceeds from the production, along with other fundraisers that the students have organized, will go to benefit seven cancer research and support organizations. So we're selling um, cancer wristbands um, that's, uh, one of them says cancer sucks, the other one says uh, say it, fight it, cure it, and the proceeds from those will go to cancer organizations. The t-shirts will go to cancer organizations. The editor of the book was kind enough to donate 20 books that we can sell. Every ticket sale will go towards uh, one of seven different organizations. And then at intermission, we are in inviting everyone to take their ticket and put it in one of the seven baskets that represent the seven different organizations. We've really, really tried not to spend any money on the show other than for posters and programs so that everything we do bring in can, can go to them. By connecting with the community and the writers of the poems, the students say they have gained a more personal meaning from the project. There's quite a few very powerful poems out there that we perform. You're trying to get the character of real people rather than fictional ones is kind of an interesting twist. To think that the people who you're trying to portray actually exist and they're not just like imaginary characters you're trying to make seem real, these people are real. Several of the poets travel to Kansas City to attend the performance, coming from as far away as Vermont and Minnesota to see their poems portrayed on stage. Wood reports that the production raised more than $1,300. For more information about Shawnee Mission South's Repertory Theater Program, visit the school's website. And for more information about the organizations mentioned in the piece, contact the individual organization or the RA Block Cancer Foundation. That's all the time we have for this episode of Spotlight on Shawnee Mission. Join us again as we continue to feature the programs and people of Shawnee Mission who are helping guide students to success. Thank you for watching.